It doesn't matter what type of comic book you are making, if it's got people in it, more than likely it's going to have clothing. Now I've come up with a rule for painting clothing called the SSS rule. And I'm using it to make my drapery and clothing in my comic books more realistic. I especially like to set my comics anywhere in the 1960s to the 1980s. And I try to make the characters look and feel like they belong to that era to help transport the reader to that era. And this rule is something that I wish I'd implemented earlier so I could have avoided some really, really bad art and it would have saved me so much more time. In my attempts to capture that realism in the clothing, I really started to pay close attention to how clothing should look, feel and interact with the surroundings and the character to make it more believable. Let's take the example of this most recent character design. He's got the jacket, the pants, the pink shirt, very Miami Vice. Let's imagine we've done all the outlining, proportions, line details. We're now only focusing on the colors. So my first thought is to only think of the suit as a solid shape. So I'm going to completely block in that shape with the base tone color for the suit in an acrylic ink base. I became really aware of this idea while researching fashion of the 60s and 70s for my comic I'm working on. I was looking at a lot of lifestyle illustrations and noticed they all shared something really similar in their work. The illustrators would really focus on just a solid colour to represent the clothing, with often just a hint of shadow or highlight to give a sense of bumps and folds. But sometimes none at all. This blocking in of one solid colour speeds up the painting process and also eliminates any white of the page making it easier to decide where the highlights will go. Now to make this work I focus on the three S's again, keeping it as simple as possible and only focusing on one colour as my highlight. As the suit is a grey colour, the initial blocked in base acts as the darker tones. Now using a lighter warm grey tone pencil, I'm going to lightly colour in the areas where light would reflect off the suit. To make it easier, I keep the light source from the front and slightly above to allow subtle shadows that help define the form. Where needed, I can use the black pencil to strengthen those really dark shadows. I really like strong shadows in my work. I'm making a horror action comic and it needs to have deep shadows that allow all sorts of scary things to hide in there. But it is a balancing act between light and dark when it comes to trying to sculpt a 2D form on paper to make it look more three-dimensional. Too much shadow in a certain part can imply that something is further away or behind another object when it actually isn't. Too much highlight can imply that something is very sharp edged and too thin. While not everyone's style or preference is to create realistic looking clothing for their illustrations, it goes without a doubt that shadows and highlights are key to making your work look more realistic. And it's the three S's, simplify, 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 at each stage of the process that will allow you to break down complex ideas into really manageable processes so you can execute them better. If you would like to watch the full unedited version of the making of this video, I will leave a link to it somewhere around here on the screen. And uh, I'll see you next time.